Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Remember to subscribe if you don't already and select alerts to stay up to speed with the latest from me. This is part 17 of the history of the gyroplane. In this film we look at propeller thrust line and the vertical centre of gravity except because you're watching my channel and more likely to be a pilot than a scientist it's relevant to you because it relates to what has become known as power pushover. Power pushover is a potential outcome from extreme pilot induced oscillation. I say extreme because it is worth highlighting it requires a level of pitch instability that significantly reduces normal G loading and something that is beyond how a pilot would normally maneuver. If a gyroplane becomes oscillatory and you are aware of the issue, if you lead by closing the throttle and holding the stick slightly aft to load the disc, then the aircraft will settle. As an aside, to feel what zero G feels like, I recommend gyroplane pilots take an experienced flight in an aerobatic aircraft to give you some colour of the feeling of extreme manoeuvring. And then you will see that these feelings are not ambiguous. This air command has what is known as a high propeller thrust line. That is to say, the thrust vector of the propeller is above the vertical centre of gravity. It isn't necessarily easy to see, so let me annotate the picture and highlight the propeller thrust line. You can see in this case that the propeller thrust is broadly in line with the pilot's shoulder blades. Power pushover is when the thrust vector of the propeller is above the vertical centre of gravity of the aircraft, as you can see here, and the thrust offset creates a torque moment around the centre of gravity of the aircraft and causes it to want to pitch forward around the vertical C of G. What keeps things in check in normal flight is the rotor thrust from the blades at the top of the mast. Low G flight upsets that balance of moment between propeller and rotor thrust and if the rotor suddenly becomes offloaded the resultant out of balance couple caused by the propeller thrust acting about the C of G can cause a self-sustaining irreversible forward bunt over. In most accidents the rotor has either struck the rudder or the propeller because during the forward bunt the gyroplane tail rotates upwards into the rotor at a faster rate than the rotor can process in the same direction. A solution for aircraft that originally had a high propeller thrust line is modification to the original aircraft which as you can see raises the vertical centre of gravity so that the propeller thrust becomes closer to that C of G and therefore reducing the moment. This Air Command single seat gyroplane has been upgraded to centre line thrust. The front keel was raised 14 inches so that the thrust line from the centre of the propeller intersects the centre of gravity located approximately at the pilot's navel. It has also been fitted with a horizontal stabiliser. The combination of horizontal stabiliser and the centreline thrust enhance the pitch stability which guards against pilot induced oscillation. Or you could just design the aircraft that way in the first place as per the Dominator. However, as you can see these aircraft designs are not all that pleasing on the eye. Another solution is to incline the engine mount so that the propeller thrust, the propeller being mounted to the engine, is angled downwards and towards the C of G, as you can see in this diagram. Some of you are thinking that this centerline thrust was all a result of Glasgow University Dynamics study, kicked off in the mid 90s, or a result of Rotor Flight Dynamics Dominator of 1988. Except Peter Lovegrove beat them with his cricket by about 20 years and Joan de la Sierva beat him by almost 50 years. I guess it just shows good design as well. It's just that, good design. Some of you deeper thinkers might be wondering how Benson got away with this for so long. After all, his aircraft had higher propeller thrust lines and no horizontal stabilizers since the mid 1950s. So why didn't the issue show itself then? It's what we'll investigate in the next chapter. 